I have reached a revelation. This is episode 7 of the Corruption of Colton podcast. And today we're going to be talking about hard rock band Revelation Theory and their debut album, Truth is Currency, from 2005. Now, I don't really have anything else to say, so let's get right into it. This album opens up with a song called Out of Our Hands, and I perceive it as a song about desperation. That's what it reminds me of when I read the lyrics like, it's out of our hands, the world is never changing, etc. And from the vocals, it just sounds like a cry for help. It sounds like desperation. And I definitely can vibe with that, which is why I like this song. There have been times in my life where I have just felt absolutely desperate. My life feels like it's dissipating. I feel like my sanity is just getting demolished piece by piece, event by event, one by one, you know. So I definitely vibe this song. I really enjoy it. It has a crunchy riff to boot, so I really like it. I think it's a good song. I would think one of the events in my life that made me feel true desperation had to have been when I was at a party once with my family and my mom was drunk and fighting me for the keys while my dad was in the bathroom and I was just desperate and keen on getting the keys away from my mom because she was um, hooked on the idea of driving home. Man, it was quite terrifying. I think I was like 10 or 11 years old at the time. So it was definitely a quite terrifying childhood experience. Um, but it, and it still, and but it still was a good lesson, I believe. It, it taught me the dangers of alcohol and I learned that lesson. I learned a lesson that night in a quite terrifying circumstance, but learned a lesson nonetheless, and I'm grateful for that experience. I'm not grateful for how it went down, obviously. I wouldn't want anyone to go through that, but I'm grateful that I had that experience and learned the dangers of drinking, and I'm glad to have just learned it from my own family and not from some random stranger or by me having a bad experience by me drinking alcohol myself. So I think that that's good but still I felt true desperation like I was desperate to get the keys away from home away from my mom because I'd heard horror stories about like people driving drunk and then like getting in extreme accidents though I was a kid I was a very smart kid and I knew that it was a dangerous situation and I managed to get the keys away from my mom and we're still alive to this day yay So that's my little story about True Desperation. Let's move on to the next track. Sometimes I feel like I can't wake up. I'm trying to breathe. I want to let go. So I can feel again. I'm trying to break up. I'm trying to see. If I can let go, I want to pull away and feel again. Silver, we pulled it off. I'm clean. Those are some of the lyrics to the second track on this album, Slow Burn. To me, it sounds like the frontman of Revelation Theory is suffering with drug addiction in this song. And though I have never suffered from drug addiction, I have suffered from addictions in my life. And I can suffer, I can relate to the feeling of there's no escape, like you're stuck with this addiction, you can't wake up, um... There's a lot, you're having a lot of headaches and you feel like you just can't pull away from this. You've already absorbed so much of your life into it. I definitely relate. I used to suffer with soda addiction and I would drink several soda cans a day. It wasn't healthy for me. I started getting dizzy and getting headaches and all those, you know, caffeine, sugar, overdose side effects, right? And one of the things I'm, one of the biggest things I'm proud of in my life was escaping that, breaking free of it, and limiting myself in my soda consumption. I do drink soda every day for caffeine purposes because I have a, um, what I'm pretty sure is a sleep condition. I have one of the worst sleep cycles and sleep schedules ever seen. I go to bed at like midnight, 1, 2 a.m., then get up for school slash work at like 7 a.m. 
So I only get like what? Five hours of sleep, right? Every night. That's my life. Except for the weekends where I get like 12 hours of sleep and I sleep great. But I only get to sleep, uh, I only get to catch up on sleep like on the weekends and then I'm fucked up for another week all over again, right? And it sucks. Then you go on Thanksgiving or Christmas break from school. You get your sleep back on track, getting like 12 hours of sleep at night. But then school starts up again and it's just hopeless. It's a vicious cycle and that's how I suffer now. But the soda wakes me up in the morning with the caffeine. But now I limit myself to like one or two cans a day because I used to be drinking like five or six. And like I said, it took over my life. It consumed me. I was getting headaches, getting dizzy. I wasn't drinking much water. I wasn't taking care of myself. I was more absorbed in the... How, like, I was more absorbed in just how good the cola tastes because I would drink, like, Col- Coke and Pepsi and RC. And I was just more absorbed in how amazing it tasted and how addicting it was. And finally, my dad, like, opened my eyes and I realized what I was doing wrong, how this wasn't healthy and how this is going to lead to something like diabetes. And, you know, I really started to take more initiative on my health and... I'm very proud of that. I feel like I would be far worse off if I didn't do that. If I was still drinking that much soda every day, I think I probably would be dead by now. And so, though I haven't suffered a drug addiction, I can relate to this song and I know what it's like to suffer with an addiction that you feel like you just can't break free of. But let me tell you, you can. If there's anybody listening to this podcast who is suffering with a drug addiction alcohol addiction, soda addiction, I don't know, balloon addiction, I don't know any addiction. Um, I'm just here to tell you that I'm here to that it's never too late. I'm here to let you know that you can always break free from your addictions with either proper counseling or proper self-discipline. You can escape. I know it's hard, especially with um, sugar addictions, because as after your body gets used to it, when you wane yourself off of it, you get even worse headaches than before, which I did have, which would sometimes make me want to relapse. But I would always fight the urge to relapse, and that's what you gotta do. You gotta fight that relapse urge. If you relapse, you're only gonna destroy yourself more. You're only gonna destroy more of your body and even your mental health. I started having bad mental health from soda taking over my life. Just don't let your addictions take over your life. That's what I want to tell everybody that's the advice i want to give to anybody on this listening to this podcast who is suffering with an addiction go get help please you can even google phone numbers for this kind of thing check into rehab if you have to please let's move on to the next song i just wanted to say that real quick track three after the rain has a bad ass bass line Usually in most rock and metal songs, the bass is just kind of buried in the mix, but here the bass is anything but buried. This song is doing anything but lacking bass. The bass makes itself known. I don't know if it was just my headphones or the audio quality or how I played it or what, but the bass feels like it's shaking the song. It feels like it's shaking my headphones. The bass makes itself it's self known and i love that about this i usually come back to this song for the bass line but i do also come back to it for the vibe i perceive this song as being about suicide to be honest with you because it sings about how there's nothing to prove there's nothing to give and i feel like the song is trying to say well there's nothing to prove to this world there's nothing to give why the fuck are we here and i feel like that sometimes sometimes i feel like I have nothing to prove to anyone, not even myself. I don't have anything to give. Why am I on this earth? It takes a while for me to even get out of the bed some mornings because I am depressed. I will say I've had suicidal thoughts a few times in my life. I've even checked into mental hospitals to get professional help. And so I can seriously relate to the vibe this song gives off about feeling like everything is hopeless. It's useless. There's nothing to prove, nothing to give. And... I feel for Rev Theory here. Oh, man. 
I, I especially feel suicidal during like breakups or loss of friends, but I get through it. I would say I'm not as suicidal as I used to be, but I get the feeling of feeling suicidal and depressed, and I even get having anxiety, all that. I am a huge advocate for mental health. If anybody's struggling with mental health that's listening to this podcast, please get help. Just like what I said during the drug addiction segment, please get help, my brother, my sisters, anybody. Get some help. Leaving it up to you sounds like, at least to me from what I heard from the lyrics and stuff, sounds like a song about having trouble moving on from your ex and missing them and no matter how hard you try, you miss them and just want them to give you a second chance, but you're unsure if it's a good idea or not, so you leave it up to them, which, let me say, I've been there. Honestly, I've been there. I know what it feels like to miss your ex, second guess your relationship and your choices, so you leave the fate of the relationship to the other person, or you might leave the second chance idea up to the other person, which I have definitely done. And let me say, it's never a good idea. It's not a good idea to leave it up to the second. Uh, it's not a good idea to leave it up to the um, other party. I'm not saying that you should make decisions for someone else in your relationship. What I'm saying is it should always be mutual. It shouldn't be that one person makes the decision. It should be that both. So if you both agree that you should give the relationship another try, then you absolutely should but if you're unsure and you feel like you need the other person to make the decision it's not a good idea because you need to know what you want and be able to make decisions for yourself as well and if you feel like you can't make a decision for yourself and need to leave it up to the other person dating them's just probably not a good idea it's probably going to lead to being an unhealthy relationship and probably has been before because i feel like if your relationship's unhealthy or your relationship with them prior was unhealthy, you wouldn't have the urge to leave the decision up to them. You would know what you want. But usually in toxic relationships, you second doubt a lot of things. So, you know, I'm just saying, be sure about what you want. Don't even bring up the idea of a second chance in a relationship if you're 100% sure that you think it's a good idea and then hear the other person out on if they think it's a good idea is what I'm saying. And I'm sorry, just this song brought out, <laughs> this song brought out the advice side of me. I actually want to be a therapist one day and this just brought out therapist Colton listening to this song and listening to the lyrics. It totally brought out the therapist side of me. And it's because I have given advice to friends before, but like, it's songs like this that make me want to give advice because the song sounds like it's asking a very serious, touching thing. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on to the next one. I really enjoyed this song. This next song, Selfish and Cold, I find very interesting after breaking down my analysis. So to me, it kind of sounds like a song about being in an abusive relationship and wanting to leave, but feeling like if they leave the relationship, they would be a selfish person, when honestly, that's the least selfish thing you, selfish thing you can do. It's selfish, but also selfless if you think about it, because you're doing the best thing for yourself, but also the best thing for your mental health, and doing the best thing for your mental health is selfish and selfless at the same time, because doing what's best for your mental health means you're also putting technically others into consideration because if you're mentally unwell, you might start becoming a completely different person and harm others around you. I've seen how being depressed and anxious can turn people into like either jerks or quiet standoffish people and then they just don't care about their friends or family anymore and end up harming the ones they love in the end. So in a way, Doing what's selfish can also be considered selfless because you're doing what's best for you, which in the end is the best for the, uh, for the ones you love around you and others. So I hope that what I said makes sense, but let me read you some lyrics to help you understand how I came to this conclusion. It's really interesting. I probably got the song wrong. I probably got it wrong, but this is how I perceived it. Remember how... 
how I analyze the uh, fuck, how I think these songs, what I think these songs are about are based off how I hear them. And again, music is all subjective, so someone might hear these lyrics differently. But I did look them up to ant to make sure I was analyzing correctly, and I came to that conclusion. So let me read you some lyrics. Your voice is killing me. Your words are as hard as they come. The thoughts that are sitting here are falling like bullets to the floor. The scars that cannot heal, the hurt is covered to the bone. Because every time, it gets so complicated. That's how I came to the conclusion that this might be about some abusive relationship, either physical or emotional, or some, like, abusive scenario, right? That's how I was able to break down this little verse. I'll tell myself I'm leaving here. Because I'm selfish and cold. That's how I kind of was able to break down the idea that this might be about doubting if you should leave the abusive situation or not and thinking that you might be a selfish or cold person for doing so. But the truth is, you wouldn't be, buddy. And some of the other lyrics in this chorus, you know, they definitely nail nail that in as well, that thought. Anyways... Let's move on to the next track. This was a good song, by the way. I'm convinced that track six, Take It Away, is also about an abusive relationship. I mean, you've got lyrics like, is this what you wanted? You got what you needed? And things like, you take control of my life. You take control of... Specifically stating taking control of my soul, taking control of my life. So I'm pretty sure this is a song about an abusive relationship. Again, I can relate to this. Um, I was always told what to do in my relationship with my ex, Emma. I think I've mentioned this on the podcast, but I was obviously told when I could go out with my friends, um, where I could go, for how long i had to text her like almost every hour with updates had to let her know when i got home she had to know if any girls were around etc there was just a lot of control in that relationship it was very overbearing and it felt like she just took my life away from me and it just became her life so i completely get the picture they're painting with this song i really enjoyed it So far, this is actually turning out to be a really good and relatable album. Also, can we talk about real quick how all the instruments in this song complement each other? Like, I just feel like the guitars, it starts out with an acoustic guitar, which blends well with the bass. Then the electric guitars come in and and those blend well with the bass and the drums. And I know that's how music works. All the instruments, vocals, all that, they all complement each other. But, like, here it's just done exceptionally well. Like... It doesn't, the the instruments don't just complement each other. They just do it exceptionally well. Better than usual. So that's a point for this song. I love it. Fate, it never followed me. Until now, I never wanted it to. Take me. I'm craving. I fucked up everything until now. You gave it away and now I've come undone. Thinking of you, I can't let it go. This is just a few samples of lyrics in track seven, Undone. Um, I had trouble trying to make something of this song and what it might mean. But after reading the lyrics over and over again, I've come to the conclusion that this might be a song about falling in love with someone and trying to keep it a secret, you know, not wanting them to know, but then they uncovered it. And so he wants um, fate to be that she loves him back. And then um, when he says, take me and I never want to let go, which I never want to let go is one of the lyrics there. Maybe they did fall in love and he feels like he usually fucks up everything but this is the one thing he didn't that's what i get from this and it's actually kind of a sweet story to think that this could be a song about 
someone getting the love they thought they never could. Oh, man, I wish I could do that. I actually have had a crush on a girl for several years that, man, I wish she recognized me. I wish I could get her attention. Damn. So I have this friend. I go to his house quite often. It's getting quite personal on the podcast. Holy shit. Um, I have this friend. Uh, we'll call him uh, Chaz. I don't know. We'll call him that. I don't want to say his real name in case him or someone in his family listens to this podcast. But um, I go to his house quite often. He comes to mind. We went to school together, etc. But anyways, he has a sister around my age who will call uh, Aaron, I guess, because that's a that's a universal name. Um, Aaron, I guess, is what we'll call her. And uh, she's she's my age, just a few months older, really, only by a few months. But I really like her. I have a huge crush on her. I've had one on her since I met her. We have a lot in common. Like, we both love music is one thing we heavily share an interest in and unfortunately she's always had boyfriends and even when she's ended up single i've never like found out until she like finds a new boyfriend because i'll find out she's like oh i'm dating someone new and i'll be like fuck you were single for a little bit and i never knew and now i just feel like even if she was single she probably wouldn't have much of an interest in me just because i'm like i'm her brother's friend i feel like there just wouldn't be much interest there She probably only sees me as a friend anywhere, anyway, when I come over to their house. And it's just a mind fuck. Like, you know, like, I have to live with these feelings that I can never speak of because I can't speak to them about her, so I have to keep them in. Because if I speak to them, if I speak to her about them, she'll probably hate me or something or kick me out. I don't know. Or my relationship with the family will be all fucked up because I'm on good terms with, like, his mom and, like, everyone in his family. They think I'm a great friend, a great influence, etc. Like, I just feel like... It would just be a whole fuck. It would be a whole fuck up, right? So, looks like for the next 20, 30 years of my life, unless my feelings go away, I'll be living with this mind fuck for a while. Oh, it's it's tough, but this song makes me feel better and feel like I'm not the only one who feels this way. Even if this isn't what the song is about, I'm going to receive it as such now. You can't stop me. Um, anyways, let's move on. Probably my favorite song on the album now. I can't deny it. I fucking love it! It brings on confidence and courage that I lost. I turn into it. It helps me through it. Until I lie awake and contemplate it. I know I hate you. I can't escape you. I can't resist it. I wouldn't miss it. This honestly sounds like a song about somebody... Being in, like, a toxic relationship, but loving having sex with the person. That's how I perceive this. It might be because I just have a messed up mind, but that's totally how I perceive this. I can't relate to this topic. Um, not well, anyway. I mean, I will say, you know, though my ex cheated, I do miss, you know, how great... The sex was. That's not me trying to be a perverted person. I wouldn't go back to her. Even if I was promised all the sex in the world, I would not go back to that toxic relationship. I'm just saying I can sort of relate, I guess, to, like, loving the intimacy. Even though the person's very toxic, I can sort of relate. But you shouldn't rely on the sex to get you through the day. (laughs) And that's kind of what this sounds like. You just rely on the sex to get through the day. But um, it's a good song. I mean, it has one of the crunchiest bass riffs on the album. The song just goes... Oh, wait. Is that the last song? Wait, no. It is this song. It just goes... Just shaking your headphones and through a stereo system would probably shake the fucking room. I cannot wait to get this record on CD and put it through my stereo system and just hear it shake the fucking wall. That's one of the most enjoyable thing about owning CDs or vinyl is those bass lines or those guitar riffs or drums that just shake your surroundings it's the best part 
World to Burn sounds like a track singing about what happens when you push someone away in life and how their world starts to burn because they pushed you away and now they have to live with that regret. And I definitely can relate to that. I can definitely say sometimes my world feels like it's burning because I've pushed someone away. Um, One time, I have really wanted to talk about this on the podcast, and this song is like the perfect time for that, Um, judging judging by this subject matter, right? So I dated a girl for like a month or two named like Flowers. That's the name she went by on the internet, so that's what I'm going to use. I'm not going to use her real name because she has an internet alias, which can obviously be used since it's public. So um, she went by Flowers, right? Uh, obviously that's not what I called her, but anyway, so we met and we like fell in love fast. We really loved each other. I had just come out of like the heartbreak of Caitlyn though. I had really come out of getting seriously hurt by Caitlyn, by the cheating and stuff. So I like basically fell fast for her, but... I was scared about getting cheated on again or being used, so I quickly left her and ran from the relationship, and I haven't been able to to get her back. She won't accept my apology. It's been a while since then, but even though it's been, like, a year since then, it still hurts to, like, let her go, right? Like, from what I know, she has a new boyfriend now, and it really hurts me just to know that she's with somebody else and someone else gets to hold her all the time and someone else gets to kiss her after just really falling for her and i just live with the regret every day that i pushed her away for the stupid reason that i was nervous when i could have just talked these fears out with her but instead i ran away like a little biatch and in turn i lost probably the best girlfriend i'd had at the time she was very sweet to me very supportive she would do literally anything for me. I don't think there was something she wouldn't do. She was very dedicated to the relationship. She had a very sweet voice and demeanor and tone when she dealt with me and my anxiety. I just, I regret it. I live with this regret every day. And to boot, she was a metalhead like me. I had, I had it all. I had a sweet, compassionate metalhead girlfriend and I just let it all burn because of some insecurity I had that could have been talked out through relationship counseling or something. I live with this serious regret every day. And that's why I haven't really dated that much since, and most of my relationships don't last, is I just don't feel comfortable in them because I don't feel that same connection. And it makes me understand and makes me realize what a connection is supposed to feel like. And considering I haven't felt anything like that connection since... I date for a little bit and then I just realize it's not working out. And I explain that to them. I'm saying, look, we gave this a try. It's just not working out though. And that definitely has happened. Um, let, let's move on to the next song before I break down into tears over flowers. Over the Line is an acoustic ballad which ends off this album. It's a rock ballad love song it's a typical love song but a good love song nonetheless i really like the acoustic guitars i think it really complements the song so do the lyrics it's just a sweet love song and i really enjoy it who doesn't like a love song in rock right there are so many good ones like everything i do i do it for you by brian adams don't know what you got till it's gone by cinderella you daughtry's used to nickelback's far away all kinds of good love songs, and I would add this to the list of them. Anyways, let's go over my thoughts of this album. All right, let's break this album down one by one, starting with the bass. That's my favorite instrument on this album. It can be from like a slow, like kind of like bass that's slow but groovy and complements with the other instruments to just shaking. I'd say the best examples of good bass are on songs like Loathe and After the Rain. Those are probably my two favorite bass performances. 
And I also think that there's good crunchy guitar riffs on this album. I would say the best guitar riffs are on World the Burn and Undone, especially World the Burn, where it feels like the riff just squeals behind the drums. It just, it works really well. All right, now let's go over my favorite songs on this album. No particular order, because I have a lot of favorites, but I guess we'll just go by track list. Slow Burn, because of the... Subjects about addiction, which I can relate to with soda. It doesn't always have to be drugs. Crunchy riffs, good drums, catchy chorus, relatable. All good reasons. Then there's the songs about relationship contemplation, like Leave It Up To You and Selfish and Cold. I'd say my favorite song off this album, though, would have to be Leave It Up To You. I feel like I related to it the most i feel like it is the most like strong it has the best chorus the best lyrics best instrumentation definitely my number one favorite on this album but again there's a lot of favorites i had to re-listen to this album several times sometimes even several songs several times Uh, To even get to this result, I was originally going to pick a different song for my favorite, but it eventually came down to this after I had listened back to all my recorded notes, you know, because I obviously recorded my reviews. So after listening to my reviews of each song, taking notes of what I said and how I felt about those songs, and then listening to the ones that I praised the most, I was able to come down to the fact that I like that song the most i give this album a four and a half out of five it is super duper strong tune in next time where we're going to talk about the best metal out rock and metal albums of each year because i saw an article about it on loudwire so see you guys in episode eight or hear you guys damn it Uh uh-uh